Welcome. Remember to keep an eye on any valuables you may have brought with you. In case of emergency, watch your step as you walk to the nearest exit and move a safe distance away. And if you spot any suspicious behavior or characters, please report them to our crew. Now, welcome to Dolby Cinema at AMC Prime. Today is Wednesday, September 29th, and this is a recap the stock market activities today. Folks, I got a good one for you tonight, but I hope you enjoyed the movie in the beginning. And of course, for the AMC apes, I hope that you got some bananas from our dark pools because we ran out of popcorn and you're not into popcorn to begin with. And if you, while watching the movie, got some of that squeeze in your shorts, bathrooms downstairs. But anyhow, I want to talk about this because you might have heard that our dear leaders, our big tech oligarchs of YouTube who we love and we adore and we respect they now say that you're not allowed um, to question things. They're banning anti-V videos and channels. You know, the V, the big V, the one we can't talk about. We can't say the actual V because it triggers the algos police. So we're just going to call it the jab. So they're banning anti-jabbers. The jab for the C word. Not the C word that you use to insult mean ladies. No, 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 no. We're talking about the big C. You know, the one. Although nowadays they call it Delta, so perhaps we should call it the Big D. Oh, wait a minute. That's even worse. Anyhow, you know what I'm talking about. But our D leaders, they say we're going to ban anti-jabbers. But they don't distinguish between what is, what constitutes an anti-jabber. Is it your crazy Uncle Johnny who says if you get the jab... It's going to implant many Bill Gateses inside your body, and they're going to start to control it. Well, he's dead. So, uh, you know, in general, you always have to be careful. Uh, or is it the anti-jabber who says, well, we have some scientific data about the waning efficacy of the jab? 
Or is it the anti-jabber who says, what about natural immunity? Why is that not counted? Or is it the anti-jabber who says, well, the jab gives you antibodies and therefore it reduces severe hospitalization, but it doesn't prevent contraction of the C ward, the D ward, whatever it is, or transmission of the thing. And therefore it has to be a personal choice no mandates. We just have blanket rules now. And the next thing you know, our D leaders are going to start banning anti-Federal Reserve talk on YouTube. And they're going to start banning inflation talk. All of that FUD. You know, all of these YouTubers with the FUD titles, inflation is out of control. The market is about to crash. You better watch out because our D leaders want to stop it with the FUD. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I hereby declare and announce and I solemnly swear and pledge my allegiance to our dear leaders, the big tech oligarchs, and our dear leaders at the Federal Reserve, including Mr. Dangerous. And of course, Mr. Dangerous is under attack these days. He said inflation is going to be transitory, it's going to be good for us, and now we know that inflation is bad for us. But oh, by the way, it's not transitory. Mr. Dangerous said that he works for us, and he has small businesses and average folks interest in mind. Meanwhile, we now know that all of what he has achieved is making the rich richer, gaining trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars amidst a pandemic while the poor and middle class suffer and their incomes went down. The purchasing power of the poor middle class went down. The standard of living went down. But with all of that, I still do Pledge my allegiance and loyalty to Mr. Dangerous. And I say, there is no time to die here. And therefore, I support a second term for Mr. Dangerous to be the head of the Federal Reserve. And I don't agree at all with that communist, Elizabeth Warren. I'm 100% behind Mr. Dangerous. He's our leader and we should trust him. No questions asked at all. Of course, I'm saying that because I don't want the government to lock my capsule or cut my uh, universal income in my digital wallet or perhaps shut down the chip that is implanted in my brain. I'm all in. Full loyalty. No questions asked to our D leaders. And with that message out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the market because it's starting to feel as we're about to have another massive flush down. And we gotta buckle our seat belts and stock on diapers. Cause you know, there's a shortage of diapers. You better have some right now because you're going to need them. It's not just inflation getting out of control and interest rates raging higher, along with a market that is severely overvalued. But we also have this whole uh, debt crisis, I don't know if you heard about it, where your beloved politicians are arguing and uh, debating and brainstorming, and they have all the way till October 18th before the whole nation collapses. But what we got in the morning is that Pelosi and Schumer, along with President O'Biden, they came up with a deal in the morning, and the market was hopeful that we will have a deal by the end of the day. Unfortunately, we have senators like Manchin and Cinema and Bernie Sanders. They're not happy with the bill. They're going to go back and forth, back and forth, but we're running out of time. Getting a deal done could blast the market higher. But the problem is, even if we have a deal without Republican approval, the deal is not going to go anywhere. And therefore, all eyes are going to be centered to this debt crisis, whether we're going to have a deal or no deal. Anyhow, let's move on with the market's coverage today. And here we go. The Dow Industrial Average closing in the green with 90.73 points or a gain of 0.26%. The Nasdaq closing in the red down 34.24 points or a decline of 0.24%. The S&P 500 closing in the green with 6.83 points or a gain of 0.16%. And what about the sector's performance today? Leading the pack at number one and capturing the gold medal, utilities. Number two for the silver, consumer defensives. And number three for the bronze, healthcare. 
Meanwhile, the laggards of the day, communication services, energy, and materials. The theme is obviously extremely defensive today, with utilities, defensives, and healthcare leading the day. Now, these sectors of the market will not perform if yields continue to pop higher. But yields were stable today, and money had to go somewhere, and it decided to buy the dip in utilities, healthcare, and defensives. What about the advanced to decline ratios? NYSE 58% advancing versus 39% declining. What about the Nasdaq? 43% advancing versus 54% declining. Moving on to futures. What's going on here? The dollar is popping higher. A massive move in the US dollar and we continue to see the sterling down big due to the energy crisis over over the United Kingdom and then we have the New Zealand Kiwi also down big over 1% all of that pressure is boosting the US dollar higher and higher and higher not to mention the threat of tapering which is also contributing to the US dollar riding higher a higher US dollar is not good for commodities but specifically metals but perhaps the most resilient rally in futures has been from crude oil. Crude oil has been rallying regardless of the move higher in the United States dollar. But today, perhaps we have a top for now, or perhaps a pause, at least for now, because crude oil prices were down 1% apiece for the WTI and Brent. Meanwhile, gasoline prices continue to surge higher along with heating oil, but perhaps we have a top here, at least for now, in natural gas. And this will ease the crisis over the United Kingdom. We will see the sterling bottoming, reversing the move higher, and that could add a top on the US dollar. And we will see the dollar trending down, at least in the short term. And this will be good for commodities to recover higher. So you haven't seen the end of the rally in crude oil. This is the point here. What about softs? We have declines for coffee lumber and sugar meanwhile gains led by cotton cotton no stop inside here we thought 100 would be the top because traders are eyeing the round number but it continues to go higher and higher and higher and cotton prices right now at the highest level historically speaking if you forego the pop in 2011 what does that mean apparel prices will surge higher so if you thought inflation is transitory think again but beside cotton we have gains for cocoa and oj futures what about metals not good here gold down silver down platinum down copper down palladium down everything is down why the u.s dollar is popping higher what about meats not a good day for feed or cattle futures down over one percent meanwhile live cattle and lean hogs futures pretty much on the flat line. What about grains? Surging higher in some names, led by corn, canola, oats, soybean oil, soybeans, soybean meal, all rising higher. The only laggard here is rough rice, down about 1% or so. Now, the expectations are that we're going to see the rally in futures, specifically grains and some softs, coffee and OJ, continuing to go on and on and on because here it is, the country that makes breakfast for the world is plagued by fire, frost and drought. Or we're talking about Brazil, one of the most important countries in the world when it comes to trade, commodities, because it produces everything. We have weird phenomenons here with the weather, an extreme drought, frost. It was snowing in Brazil a few months ago. All of that is contributing to a low crop output. What does that mean? We have a shortage in crops, meaning prices will continue to surge higher and higher and higher. And by the way, this is what uh, Jerome Powell, Mr. Dangerous, doesn't understand. It's not just the reckless monetary policy of printing money out of thin air and flooding the financial system with liquidity, causing inflation to rise higher and higher and higher. But this is also coming hand in hand with climate change, weird weather phenomenons, diseases in cows, pork, factory shutdowns, port shutdowns, log jams. This is what Powell forgot to calculate in his non-existing formula when he was guiding inflation higher. And now the man has ushered a monster called inflation, a massive tornado that is roaming around causing destruction all over the place. And it is too late to stop it now. And the only tool we have to stop the tornado is the nuclear option, which is raising interest rates. Raising interest rates will stop inflation, but it will also destroy the global economy. Why? Because we have the highest debt to GDP ratio. We have zombified companies all over the place. We have zombified economies all over the place. 
and the global economy will not be able to handle an increase in interest rates. Therefore, we've been saying over and over and over again, you gotta start tapering now, Mr. Powell. But he did not listen, and we are now facing the ramifications. Moving on to the big casino, the options market, what's going on here? The hottest table in the casino is Tesla with 800,000 contracts. And by the way, notice the volume here, lack of conviction. They don't want to buy options here. If you make the wrong move, you will get smoked big time because you could buy puts, you could buy calls. But if the volatility continues to rise higher, then we have massive moves coming up or down. If you get it wrong, you're going to lose big time. And therefore, we have some cautious activity here. Anyhow, the souffle at number one with about 800,000 contracts, about 58% of those were calls. And by the way, we're going to talk about the souffle because perhaps we're getting closer to the top here. Who knows, because you're fighting the whale, you know, the market manipulator. But we have bad news racking up here for the souffle. And we'll do that, of course, in the charts analysis. But for now, Apple at number two with about 700,000 contracts, about 63% of those were calls. And number three, the ticker LCID Lucid Motor, a big today. And the reason is they're confirming the production of the Lucid Air. And by the way, the range is much higher and better than the Souffles. But here we go, Lucid at number three with a little over half a million contracts traded today. About 76% of those were calls. Moving on to the unusual activities that took place in the options market today, starting with the ticker SPY, the S&P 500. This is a big one. They're buying puts here, betting for more declines to come in the indices. They're buying the 413 puts with the expiration date October 29th with expectations that the name will drop down more than 5% by then. And they paid about 4 bucks and 10 cents a piece to enter the strain. All in all, spending about $19 million. You cannot ignore trades like this. What about the trade for the ticker EQT? For, you guessed it, EQT. The name was down big today and they're betting for more declines to come by buying the 19 puts with the expiration date November 19th with expectations that the name will drop down by more than 8.5% by then. And they paid about one buck a piece to enter this trade. All in all, spending about $1 million. What about the trade for the ticker ZEN, Zendesk? They're betting for upcoming gains here by buying the 130 calls with expiration date November 19th, with expectations that the name will pop higher by more than 11% by then. They paid about three bucks a piece to enter this trade. All in all, spending about $3 million. What about the trade for the ticker QQQ for the NASDAQ? They're betting for a massive correction here, the flush down scenario, by buying the 315 puts with the expiration date October 29th with the expectations that the name will drop down by more than 12.5% by then. They paid about one buck and 50 cents a piece to enter this trade. All in all, spending about one and a half million dollars. What about the trades for the ticker NCLH? Norwegian cruises. And of course, this is called the strangle trade. And what that means is that the trader is not sure what direction the next move will be, up or down. But they have a slight bias here that perhaps the move will be to the downside. And therefore, they bought the 30 bucks calls. And they also bought the 24 bucks puts, all for the expiration date of October 29th. They paid about 60 bucks a piece for the calls and about 50 bucks a piece for the puts. All in all, it cost them about one buck and 10 cents a piece to open this strangled trade. And they spent about $900,000 for this trade. What about the trade for the ticker XLK? This is the technology ETF. They're betting for more pain to come here by buying the 142 puts with the expiration date October 15th, with expectations that the name will drop down by more than 6% by then. They paid about one buck a piece to enter this trade, all in all, spending about $700,000. What about the trade for the ticker BA for Boeing? The name is outperforming today, and they're betting for more gains to come here by buying the 240 calls for the expiration date, October 22nd. With expectations, the Boeing will rally higher by more than 6% by then. They paid about two bucks and 30 cents a piece to enter this trade. All in all, spending about one and a half million dollars. What about the trade for the ticker SLI? This is for Standard Lithium. And the name was in a world of pain today. Down big. But somebody's betting for a rebound here by buying the 10 bucks calls with the expiration date October 15th. With the expectations that the name will rebound higher by more than 23% by then. And they paid about 40 cents a piece to enter 
the trade. All in all, spending about $250,000. What about the trade for the ticker LICY for Lee Cycle, whatever that is? It's a lithium battery recycling company. Unlike SLI, this name was popping higher today, and it is becoming more popular with the retail traders and investors crowd. And they're betting for more gains to come here by buying the 15 bucks calls, the expiration date, November 19th, with the expectations that the name will pop higher by more than 21%, and they paid about 90 cents apiece to enter this trade. All in all, spending about half a million dollars. Now, the concept of this company sounds appealing to me because it's sort of a bullet stock we have this EV war. Everybody's manufacturing batteries, but who's going to recycle those batteries? The company is pretty much without any revenue now, so it is unproven. But if the concept is true and they live up to the promises, I see this as a promising investment. But for now, the valuation is out of whack. What about the trade for the ticker MRNA for Moderna? They're betting for more gains here. Actually, a rebound because the name was down big in the last few days. They're buying the 400 calls for the expiration date, October 1st. That means this upcoming Friday. With the expectations for a rebound of about 5.5% by then, and they paid about 2 bucks a piece to enter this trade. All in all, spending about $1.2 million. Moving on to the heat map analysis. What's going on here? We remain themeless. There is no theme at all. Certain names are popping higher due to individual news or short covering. For example, Wells Fargo popping higher. Even though yields went up, they went down, and they closed pretty much flat, financials did not rally today. We actually saw pain in Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs. Why is that? Perhaps I can shed some light here from my own portfolio because I have Goldman Sachs and I took profits because if the market is about to flush down or we're seeing the buy the dip crowd disappear, the option mania disappear, the retail crowd is getting slaughtered, the IPO mania coming to an end, this is not good for Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. Both of them have been benefiting from this mania bubble that we've been in. If the bubble ends, this is not good for Goldman or Morgan Stanley. We have a lot of pain in chips, for example, AMAT, LAM, Micron, which reported earnings last night, and the name was damn big. It rebounded slightly higher, but still closing in the red. And we have massive losses here. The retail crowd's favorite names, the likes of Palantir, Square, Uber, Didi, Snapchat, all of these names are damn big. Likewise, the Chinese names, no end in sight here for the pain. Alibaba down big. We will cover the chart of Alibaba tonight. JD down. All of these Chinese names are down. And of course, when the Chinese names trade down, we see pain in the casino names, Las Vegas Sands and Wynn Resorts specifically. Likewise, we have a lot of pain in gold, steel, aluminum, copper, all down because the dollar is trading higher. Likewise, the move higher in energy is pausing for now because the pop higher in the dollar index today was very concerning. So what is working in the market? What's working is healthcare, the big drug manufacturers. These are defensive names in nature. We have Netflix popping higher. The company had individual news today. Likewise, we have Electronic Arts and Activision popping higher slightly. These names already suffered a correction, a massive one ahead of time. And therefore, they're at performing so far. Lucid Motor popping higher. We already discussed that. But the majority of action, the green action, is concentrated in the defensive names. Costco, Procter & Gamble, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, the dollar stores popping higher today. They went from $1 a piece to one and a half, pretty soon two bucks, the $2 store. And of course, the majority of the green action was in REITs and utilities. These are defensives in nature, but they will not outperform if yields continue to pop higher. And of course, we have Boeing. We already talked about that one. We have individual news for Boeing, and Boeing is catching a bid in the options market. The implied volatility for Boeing is rising higher. But again, the action is so scattered here, you cannot make a conclusion. I don't believe that the pain is over yet, because if we have weakness in Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and Google, the market will not be able to rally alone. These names are the largest components of the SPY and the Qs. And perhaps you now know why I'm against this whole ETFization of the market. It's a garbage idea to begin with, and now you know why. When these names go down, they will take the entire market down with them. You cannot even hide anywhere. Moving on to charts, and I got the tsunami of tickers for you. Starting with the SPY 30 minutes chart. What's going on here? It's becoming obvious that this is a massive bear flag formation, meaning that the market wants to go down. The market wants to 
test the previous bottom. Perhaps we're going to have a double bottom and we'll take it from there. But for now, you cannot trust any rally higher. It will fade away fast. And the reason is all of these sources of concern on the wall of worry, we're not through with those. Nothing has been resolved yet. We might have a deal with the Democrats tomorrow and the algos might pop the market higher. But again, we don't have a deal until the Republicans agree and sign on it. And therefore, the support remains 434, the resistance at 438. The likelihood is we will go down to 430, the previous bottom, and see if we have support, a solid support at that level. Moving on to the daily chart for the continuous contract on the SPY. What's going on here? Not looking good. This is a bad looking chart and it suggests that we have more pain to come. The momentum indicators, the MACD and the RSI all trading down. Yes, getting closer to oversold conditions, but that doesn't mean that the pain has to stop. Perhaps we have another leg to drop all the way down to 4,232 and then we have a reliable bottom. Because for all you know, perhaps this is a reverse ABC pattern, which will take us down all the way to that target. Moving on to the Qs. 30 minutes chart. Once again, it looks like a bear flag formation. And boy, if this one flushed down, it's going to be extremely painful because the next support is way down. For now, I'm going to still maintain 360, 360 and a half as support. The likelihood is it's not going to hold. We have the resistance at 363. When we switch to the daily chart for the continuous contract, again, we have a confirmation now that we got a head and shoulder formation. What does that mean? We have another leg down. The momentum indicator is not looking good. Negative divergences on both. The volume is rising higher on down days and selling activities intraday. Most importantly, yes, we're getting closer to oversold conditions here. The MACD and RSI perspectives. But that doesn't mean that we're through with the pain. Perhaps one more leg down, another flush down will do the oversold conditions and we will have a tradable bottom. The problem is, where is the next target? We have soft support at around 14,400. The likelihood is that one will not hold and my target is 14,000. Now, this is already a steep correction to begin with, but wait, there is more because the Fibonacci target is all the way down to 13,599, let's say 13,600, which will move the correction target from where we are right now, for my target of about 5% correction, all the way down to about 8% correction. So we haven't seen the end of the pain yet. You might have rebounds here and there. And if we have a rebound, let's say tomorrow, for example, Democrats bring up a deal, the algos get excited, the market pops higher, you're gonna face resistance at around 15,000. Again, this is a massive change in sentiment, not just with inflation, not just with corporate earnings, but this is also a change in sentiment within market participants. They bought the dip, it fired back, and now they have to be extremely careful. You gotta remember this. This is perhaps the first time since this whole mania started when the dip buyer got a smack in the mouth and they got served the pie. Usually the bears get served the pie. Not this time around. The bears had enough pies to eat and now the bears are serving the pies to the bulls. You gotta be careful here. Moving on to the IWM faring a lot better than the SPY and the Qs. But again, I'm not buying it here. I want to see it go down to 218 and rebound from that point. Solidifying that 218 is strong support and then I will be a buyer for the IWM. The support remains 218. The resistance remains at 223. And here it is, the most important chart, the US dollar. Tricky Dixie. Tricky Dixie is moving higher, popping higher, a massive move, and we're looking for a top here. My number is 94.7. It is actually 94.68 something, but I'm rounding it up to 94.7. Could it really go all the way there? Of course, because the dollar has a lot of momentum behind it, but we're getting near a top here. And you're going to know where the top is watching the action in foreign currencies overnight. For example, the British sterling. If the sterling bottoms, let's say natural gas prices continue to decline and the sterling rebounds, you're going to know right away that the dollar is stopping. And this is good for what? Good for metals, gold, copper, oil. All of these commodities will rise higher if the dollar declines. And here it is, gold. Not looking good here, perhaps if the dollar goes all the way to the target, my target, gold will go down to, you guessed it, my target too. It's actually Fibonacci's target, but I'll steal it, no problem. 1,680, 1,685, doesn't matter to me, but I will be buying gold as a trade if it reaches that point. Moving on to yields, the second most important chart of the day, of the week, of the month, 
of the year. Bouncing back and forth within the range that I identified for you, the support of 1.5%, the resistance around 1.55%. Zigzagging back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What does that mean? Do we have a top here? Is it over? Will yield straight down from this point on? I doubt it. And the reason is we have plenty of bets that the Fed will never taper. The Fed will continue to be accommodative. Inflation is transitory. And a lot of people are long bonds. At some point, they're going to scramble. They're going to start shitting their pants. Wait a minute here. Who's going to buy these bonds from my hand at these prices? They're going to start dumping aggressively, and this will push yields even higher. We might have a short-term top here, a tradable top. What does that mean? Perhaps the rally in financials is over for now. Names like Bank of America, for example, had an excellent week last week. And even on Monday, it was a good day for banks. But perhaps we'll have a top here if yields are topping for now. What does that mean for tech? Tech has been under pressure for a long time now. If yields ease, then we will see a tradable bottom in tech. Again, no move will come in a straight line. You're going to have to take breaks. I'm not sure if this is it, the top for now, but a close below 1.5% will confirm that this is the short-term top for now. You also got to bear in mind that the action overnight will differ from the action when the U.S. market starts because the sentiment differs between overseas investors and U.S. investors. Overseas investors might buy bonds overnight and push yields down. But when U.S. trading starts, we see the opposite. Selling of bonds and yields rebounding higher. You gotta keep that perspective in mind. Moving on to the TLT, what's going on here from a weekly chart perspective? Not looking good, losing a lot of momentum here. And bear in mind that this is a weekly chart. So we might have rebounds in the daily, but the writing on the wall says it's over. Bonds will trade down from here from a weekly perspective and yields will trade higher. What about the VIX four hours chart? You knew right away, so long as the MACD indicator from a four hours perspective on the VIX is trading higher, creating green impressions in the histogram, and the pain is not over for the SPY and the broader market. When we have a crossing to the negative side, creating red impressions in the histogram, for the four hours chart in the VIX, then you know we have a tradable bottom in the SPY. Look at the chart right now. Look at where the MACD is trading. Is it over or is it not over? I say it's not over yet. I don't see a crossing. I don't see a curling down. I don't see weakness. I don't see shorter columns. Therefore, my assumption is the pop is not over in the VIX. What about Apple? A daily chart, the bear flag continues to play out. And again, the likelihood is we will flush down all the way to the target top to bottom 15% all the way down to the lower end of the channel. When is that view negated? The answer is if Apple rebounds from the double bottom formation and recaptures 145 for support on the weekly closing. Moving on to Tesla, the souffle. What's going on here? A lot of weakness. We had a sell off after the pump in the morning. The problem is for now this pattern is bullish still bullish why we have lower highs but we have higher highs so we have consolidation for now but the primary move of the consolidation the triangle consolidation the primary move was higher and the likelihood is the resolution of the consolidation will follow the primary move this is the assumption but we got a lot of bad news today number one we have tesla witch the pumper Kathy Wood, she's dumping Tesla like never before. Mama Kathy says buy Tesla because her target is $15,000 a share. But at the same time, she's dumping. Of course, we have your boy, your favorite, the con man, the snake oil salesman, Shamath Palate Potato Tequila. He's also dumping Tesla, or shall we say dumped already. He's been pumping, pumping, pumping. Tesla will double. Tesla will triple. Elon is the man. Of course, the SPAC generation of investors, the Robin Hoodiets and the likes, they followed the con man. You don't understand, bro. You're just jealous. Shamath is richer than you are. Shamath knows. The king of SPACs. And we now know that Shamath played you guys like a fiddle, like the village idiots. He took the money and left you holding the bag. You see, the market is a jungle. We have predators and we have preys. If you're not the predator, you are by default the prey. We know that Shamath is the king of predators and you guys were his prey. And of course, we have Reverend Elon Musk bitching and moaning and crying like the baby he is. 
the crybaby that he is, you know, the richest man on the planet wants his ego stroked by the president of the United States, Joe Biden. And he says that the Biden administration is biased against Tesla. Why? Because he was not invited in a recent White House event touting electric vehicles. Biden made it clear, if you don't have unions, I'm not going to deal with you. We're going to support EVs, but you got to have unions, meaning GM and Ford. If you're not a union company, goodbye. You're on your own. And by the way, Tesla is a Chinese company now. It's not even an American company. So go ahead, Elon, and keep kissing to your overlords at the Chinese Communist Party. For all you know, they're going to hit Tesla next regardless of the ass kissing and when the chinese crack down against tesla it's over it's beyond over the biggest crash in a single stock in history when we talk about the size of that stock hundreds of billions of dollars of wealth poof gone and if you thought that was bad we will see trillions of dollars poof gone where in the tulip market and here it is btc what's going on here Ooh, not looking good at all Tick tock, tick tock. The bear flag will flush down. BTC will go down 35,750. And here it is. AMC not looking good either. The bear flag is playing out. The target remains 32. And the apes must defend 32 going bananas. Planet of the apes buying AMC at 32. Because if 32 is broken, it's over. And here are some bonus charts for you. Starting with the ticker EVGO for Broadcom. This is a weekly chart. And as you can see, the stock has been an excellent performer. But is the stock and the chart topping here? We have peak momentum from an RSI and MACD indicator perspective. This is what we call the distribution phase right there. The mania is over. You're running out of buyers and sellers will show up booking profits, flushing the chart down. This is one component of the SMH, the semiconductor sector of the market. Chips have been outperforming as of late, the broader market. If chips go down, it's a massive problem because chips are a leading indicator for the optimism in the economy. And it's a leading indicator for the broader technology sector of the market. So this is an important chart to watch. Here's another one. The ticker BABA -A -A, Alibaba. I warned against buying this stock last year. We had a massive dip. And I said, don't buy it. Don't buy it. People bought it anyways. And now they're getting slaughtered. And traders and market participants continue to buy the dip here. Catching a falling knife. I will not buy the stock until it goes all the way down to 129. If it doesn't go there, I'm not interested. 129, and then I will reassess. What about the chart for the ticker SFIX? This is for Stitch Fix. The name reported earnings. We saw a massive short squeeze, popping higher, good earnings, bad earnings, who cares? The stock shot up higher, and now it is reversing the move to the downside, and likelihood is it will close the gap and reverse the move 180. Why? This is sort of a momentum stock here a speculative stock i'm not saying it's not a good company but it is a speculative stock if yields continue to rise higher a company like this where the valuation is primarily based on future earnings will suffer and therefore you're seeing traders and holders of the stock selling the rip so the likelihood is the stock will go down to close the gap what about the ticker ew edward life sciences this is a stock that I own in my portfolio, but I got rid of the entire position today. Why? We have a topping formation in the MACD and our side perspective, and even from a candlestick pattern. You see the candlestick that I'm highlighting? What is that pattern? This is your homework, by the way. Let me know in the comments. What is this pattern called? It is a topping pattern, and now we have the confirmation, and therefore, I got rid of the position, even though it's an excellent company. And I will buy the dip if the stock goes down 10 15, even 20% in a massive correction scenario. This is a company that is the leading pioneer in heart diagnostics. With all the diabetes running around and the jab, the holy jab, which is, by the way, we're not allowed or supposed to discuss any side effects from the holy jab. But perhaps a year from now, two years from now, when we're not talking about the big C, the big D, whatever it is, the side effects that nobody's talking about right now, the heartburn and the heart problems, will perhaps become an issue. Well, guess what? Which company is the leading company in heart diagnostics? The answer is Edwards Life Sciences. And therefore, I continue to be bullish in the name. But for now, I'm done with the trade. It has been good for me. We have a top. We'll take it from there.
when the stock bottoms. And here's for the maniacs. GME, GameStop. We have a double triangle formation here. It appears so, at least for now, that the second triangle will break to the downside. What does that mean? It means the end of the mania in GME. By the way, you gotta watch out for your boy Gary Gensler, because he's not gonna crack down on JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs or Citadel. He's gonna crack down on your ass. The meme stocks traders, the apes, the GameStop, whatever you call yourself, doesn't matter to me. But Gary Gensler wants to flex muscle. On your expense. Here's another chart for the ticker G O O G L for the big dog, Google, the boss, who we love and adore, of course. Remember when the little birdie told me earlier in the year, the institutional managers, they emailed me and they said the number one idea that we have is Google. And I did not believe them. I said, Google, what are you crazy? We're shifting from technology to the reopening names and you're talking about Google. And they said, yeah, yeah, yeah we know. But hear us out. Google has been an underperformer, while Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, even Facebook were rallying higher last year. Why was Google underperforming? Because the ad revenue. If we have a normalization of the economy and reopening, then the ad revenue will come back. And the value trade, the opportunity here is to buy Google. And guess what? They were right. What am I hearing right now? The same institutional managers saying perhaps this is the time to book profits the Google trade. And they should because, unless they're greedy pigs, they should book profits right now. Look at where the chart's trading right now. It's in complete insanity. Elevated levels like I have never seen before in the RSI and MACD indicators. It's pretty much a vertical line, trading higher, no corrections allowed, buying the dip over and over and over and over again. What happens when all of these managers, institutional managers, dump at the same time? Well, Google will flush down big. And if Google flushes down big, it will take the end Indices, the ETFs down with it, the SPY, the Qs, and therefore this is a name to watch. Here's another chart of NVDA NVIDIA. Massive rally as of late, the consolidation that has been going on since last year. The energy was released higher. What was the trigger for the energy to be released higher? The answer is the stock split, which by the way means nothing. It doesn't add value at all, but somehow the retail crowd believes that stock splits add some value somehow but anyhow every time we have a massive run in nvidia that is always followed by a massive correction of about double digits minimum anywhere from 14 to 25 percent and therefore let's say that this is the correction of the massive run higher that nvidia should go down all the way to the next support which will be about 18 and a half percent correction from the top which is not unusual for nvidia's chart and again this is a massive component in the SMH and other chip ETFs. If this one goes down, the weighting of NVIDIA will take entire chip ETFs down with it. So we have these whales, Google, NVIDIA. If they go down, the ETFization factor of the market will flush the entire market down, regardless of the fact that we actually have good stocks to buy here. What about the ticker MRNA, Moderna? We have a bear flag and the CEO of Moderna says we will go back to normal next year. In other words, please short my stock. We're done here. I made hundreds of millions of dollars, perhaps billions. We've been dumping and dumping and dumping. Please short our stock. We're done here. And therefore, my call is Moderna will flush down all the way to close the gap. As you can see right there, it's going to close the gap and perhaps fall all the way down to the trading channel. This will be one of the biggest corrections that you have ever seen because the name is severely overvalued. In the meantime, we have some trades for a pop, for a rebound, and this will happen. Nothing will go down in a straight line. So if you're gonna short the name, you're gonna time your shorts accordingly. And let's end in a positive note, by the way, because, uh, you know, the FUD, which is not allowed right now, they're going to ban the FUD. No more FUD. And therefore, I have to end with a positive note. Stocks that you perhaps want to buy here, starting with the ticker MRK, Merck. The name has been underperforming since the pandemic collapse. It never recovered the pre-pandemic highs. Again, this name trades as a yield proxy. So you got to be careful here. Because if yields continue to pop higher, what is the need for Merck? On the other hand, the technicals say that we have a wedge consolidation and the chart is about to break one way or the other. Since this chart has been underperforming for over a year now, perhaps the energy will be released to the upside. 
And here is the last chart of the day, the ticker BMY for Bristol Myers. A massive flush down, severe oversold conditions, and therefore we have a tradable bottom here. The RSI is bottoming, the MACD indicator is bottoming, and perhaps we will see this name outperforming the market in the days to come due to the technical rebound. Moving on to the conclusion of this video, what do we have on the economic calendar tomorrow? We have more Fed zombies speaking from Boystick to Harker to Evans. Remember Evans? Evans says we need more inflation, not lower. We have daily from the San Francisco Fed. On the macro side, we have per usual the weekly jobless claims. This is a number that we have to watch because Powell says I need to see some improvement on the jobs front before I start tapering. And then we'll have the Chicago PMI. I'll be watching that one closely because the Richmond Fed Index came out showing that the prices paid and prices received continue to rise higher while the gauge for economic activities continue to trade down or trend down. Excuse me. What does that mean? Stagflation. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm done here. This is all I got for you for now. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. If you found the information presented in this video helpful, Please subscribe, press the like button, the notification button, and follow me on social media.